Hey guys, Prepared Wanderer with another installment of the Prepared Citizen series, the Minuteman Project. And tonight I'm with my good buddy Z, who you guys saw in the last video when we were talking about building survival kits. And this video is going to be pretty interesting because this really is going to be talking about specifically uh, LBEs, patrol rigs, chest rigs, whatever you use or what you want to call them. And it's coming from the perspective, my perspective, of a newbie who's just kind of getting into this stuff uh, because I'm starting to become a better prepared citizen. And that's what this video series is to help other people like myself who are getting started. So instead of me just talking about stuff that I have and that I have really no experience with, I thought it would be really beneficial to have someone who has actually been in the military uh, been in combat um, and can speak from that perspective and show gear that he has set up uh, based on his experience but he's no longer in the military and he's applying all that knowledge um, all that experience to himself and to, to today as being just a normal Joe just like me yeah so I'm old and fat right? <laughs> We're not all young and um, hard chargers out there doing it every day. So I know there's a lot of people who are in the same boat as I am. And you're just getting started in this world of being a better prepared citizen and getting ready for uh, an eventual event that could happen in our country and just being ready for it. And part of that uh, a prepared level of preparedness is the possibility of actually carrying a weapon, mm -hmm. going mm -hmm. out in the field, and uh, protecting yourself or your loved ones, and you're going to need different types of support equipment that you normally wouldn't uh, consider or have. So, you know, if you're a, a bushcrafter or a camper, your uh, the equipment you have now may apply to some of this, but there's other items that you probably don't have or have experience with. So that's what we're going to talk about. So. What I want to do is I want to turn over the video to Z and let him go through a rig that he's put together and he can talk about the philosophy of why he has it and the items that he's chosen. And then we're going to look at something that I'm starting to put together <coughs> that um, is no way near close to the level of experience that he has, but we can talk about it, show it and then maybe do some critique and just some conversation about that. Does that sound good? Yeah, man. Okay. All right, All right Z, why don't you talk about what you brought with you tonight? Okay, show and tell. Mm -hmm. So this is my H harness, and I'll show you what it looks like in the back. Okay, that's just a butt pack back here, uh, exactly like I carried combat so before you get into that why don't you just briefly remind the viewers of your military experience i was a uh <clears throat> 12 bravo um which is a uh, a combat engineer sapper and uh, i did a lot of uh digging up landmines um part of sapper's job is to blow up bridges and bunkers and destroy enemy equipment and frequently we would just sneak in blow stuff up sneak out sneak back out try not to get killed in the process because okay. that ruins the whole day <laughs> <laughs> and uh so a lot of times we had to go with minimal gear and this is similar to what i carried but more adjusted to today's mission okay and uh, today's mission, what I've set this rig up as uh, a patrol scout type of thing. Okay. And because I'm too old to go fight in combat, I did that. It wasn't as fun as it looks like on TV. <laughs> I don't want to do that anymore. I'm old mm -hmm. and I, I'm not into that hard charging combat. Right. Shoot them up. No, no, I want to live through it and 
help the t help my community in other ways. Okay. And so basically, what I want to do is to gather intel. Mm -hmm. If SHTF situation happens. Mm -hmm. And God forbid we get invaded by somebody or our own military turns against us mm -hmm. or there's a million different situations that right that this could apply to. Yep. So what I want to be able to do with this rig is to go out, mm -hmm. obtain information, do a spot report. You military guys will know what I'm talking about, a spot report. That's... Uh, a brief intel gathering of <clears throat> who's out there, what mm -hmm. they're doing, what they look like, what kind of equipment they're carrying, and what their activity is, basically. Okay. Yeah. So I want to go out, gather information, and come back home or to our command post or incident command or whatever you want to call it. Yeah. And do that safely right <laughs> so that's what i got this rig for okay all right walk us through your gear okay we'll go through the things that are on the belt part first up front close and personal is my um ifac slash blowout kit this is i can treat i was a paramedic for 14 years i can treat a lot of injuries mm -hmm. big and small with this small kit right and this is one of those kits that you just grab it and it comes right off yeah. and then velcros back on you're good to go just snap it on there make sure that on your own first aid equipment your pouches that you put some sort of red cross on it so other people know that you know if you're laying there bleeding out that they don't have to search your gear to find something to fix you with they can identify it that way okay. next in this pouch is my night vision device um, we can go over that on another it's just an inexpensive one it's not like third gen or anything like that Combo is important so I can report back, talk to my teammates, and in case I should have to defend myself, I've got two mags, 17 round Glock mags, and the uh, triple retention holster over here. And behind that, I've got it's not really a combat knife, it's more of a Field knife, camping knife, but it's a buck, and this thing, I haven't sharpened this in probably two years, and it is still sharp. It'll shave. And I just keep that behind my holster, so I can use that for constructing a shelter, or, you know, whatever you got to cut things with. Of course, you got have to have water, so I've got water here with it, this particular canteen carrier has two small pockets on the outside one I keep the ridge line preset uh, for my shelter and the other little pouch is my coffee mess <laughs> so I'm not <laughs> leaving my house without coffee right. And then this pouch, which is just a mag pouch that I've got a full gun cleaning kit for my pistol and my rifle. Um, there's a chance I might be carrying a rifle as well. I've got the Streamlight um, flashlight, which is an angle head. So this lights up the trail as I'm diddly bopping back. Plus it's got the blue light, the green light, the white light, the red light and infrared so yep that's everything on the belt part and then let's get into my admin pouch this and it's quick to quickly disconnected with a couple of carabiners i love carabiners <laughs> and of course you can't really do anything properly without some cool guy patches <laughs> and this is like the coolest patch right here <laughs> uh in here woven in 
the molly part is a couple of flex cuffs they're basically like uh, big old zip ties with metal strands in them so it's harder mm -hmm. to cut if i have to cuff somebody or detain somebody or apply like some serious pressure to a dressing on a limb <coughs> you can use those and there's a lot of other uses for them so when i'm standing up wearing the rig my chest rig has got these paracord stoppers so it makes like a little desk right in front of me and this is a right in the rain notepad just your basic right in the rain notepad i can take notes from for navigation um, a spot report uh, gathering intel if i need to draw pictures or maps or go into further detail of something i've got a bigger right in the rain notepad of course i got a map of my area and then i've got a map here that's in a waterproof case and this velcros out so i can show it to wendell <laughs> isn't that right wendell that's right that's all right and i got a little thermometer right here it's really cute nice. but this is for writing on the maps and you can write on this because it's, it's just clear plastic and then it comes off with you know lick it mm -hmm. comes right off of there this uh this map is a 1 to 24,000 usgs um topographic topographical map which mm -hmm. i believe fits in ad 87 datum and i've got a plethora of pens and pencils i'm telling you if you carry one writing re instrument carry a mechanical pencil um mechanical pencils don't fail uh, the united states spent millions of dollars on how to invent a space pen to write in space you know for their space missions and the russians went we have pencil <laughs> keeping it simple is sometimes the best idea i've got a little bit of extra clp uh for keeping my weapons squared away a little ruler for navigational purposes and measuring things in here i've got the uh the earpiece for my radio comms which is just a, a yezu uh i think it's ft60 i think so you're running a ham radio yeah it's a ham radio but it does get mirrors uh -huh. so i can operate it legally without getting in too much trouble but in an emergency mm -hmm. you're allowed to use ham radio oh this is my grid reader it's really hard to see but that's, that's what i that's the military issue on it. yeah one of the several different kinds of the issue but that's my favorite kind right and uh yeah that's pretty much everything oh and i've got a little short wave radio because you never know there may be radio stations still operating and i want to know what's going on in the world you to pick up intelligence yes every reports yeah weather reports is very important so <clears throat> and then the fun stuff this is the part i like the best because this is where i keep my food <laughs> in here um on the bottom of my butt pack this is just a military issue gi butt pack nothing fancy i've got a uh, a bedroll which is basically just a uh military issue poncho with a military issue poncho liner inside it hmm real easy yeah. you can zip that up and or button it up whatever you do and that's kind of like your shelter and your sleeping bag all in one it's not the best shelter ever but it does it, it serves its purpose now <clears throat> straight off the bat i like to see where i'm going so i've got a inexpensive headlamp i've got other headlamps but uh 
I paid very little for this and it works really well and when it dies then I'll throw it away but until then we'll keep it in here I have a little Russian stove that you've seen in other videos this just folds up into a little stove it's got the matches to go with it and you can warm yourself up a brew bug spray nobody likes getting bit by skeeters this is we're not going to show you all the things that are in here but this is a uh, tripwire uh, perimeter security device uh, due to legal reasons and we're not going to go into that too much this is just your basic camo hanky million uses batteries for my things that take batteries uh, plain old one gallon Ziploc bag. Now, if I want to use this pack for gathering other things, I can take all this stuff, put it in this gallon bag, and set it somewhere, and then come back to it later. You can also use that for more disgusting things that I'll let you use your imagination for. <laughs> Speaking of, got a little bit, this Kuglins, Coglins, however you pronounce that, this, this is like almost a whole roll of toilet paper, but it doesn't have a core, and it's really easy to use. Mm -hmm. And it's good toilet paper. It doesn't hurt my bottom. And I just put a little uh, zip tie on it, so when you're doing your business, you can hang it from a branch. <laughs> huh. Smoke grenade. This is the pull pin type that from, I believe this is Enola Gay. Please don't deploy that in my house. Really? <laughs> You're no fun. The neighbors might complain. <laughs> you might complain. Yeah, I think I would. So, uh, for signaling, space blanket for obvious reasons. And I've taken a lot of grief for this, but I always carry a deck of cards. Uh, I can't tell you how many times I've been on a stakeout or a patrol, and then we get told to, to stay in place. It might be 10 minutes, it might be 10 hours, you never know. Mm -hmm. And if you got somebody with you, you can always knock out a game of cards or two. That's how I win all my money from Wendell. <laughs> I have a little bit of uh, a nailed wire <clears throat> for making repairs, making snare, uh, snare traps for small game. Um, lots of uses for some snare wire. Ah. My coffee cup. <laughs> I love my coffee cup. Coffee and a couple of sugars. Because I like sugar in my coffee. Here's a little alcohol stove. This this part folds up, goes on top, and cook up your coffee with that. So you got I, a couple of ways of heating water. Yes. Yeah. Heating water, uh purifying water and I got a little miniature fire kit that's not too extensive uh, really if you got a Bic you're, you're doing pretty good mm -hmm. I got some homemade fire starters which uh, I take I steal my wife's makeup round things oh, the they're pads? made out of cotton yeah, yeah. The pads, and then uh, I, I roll up little slivers of fat wood on the inside <clears throat> and roll it up and dip it in melted paraffin mm -hmm. got a little bit of uh duct tape around my lighter because you know, duct tape's always good and i've got some like lifeboat matches safety matches these things are like little road flares and i've got uh oddly enough about three days of supply of food in here because two days is enough so three that'll get me now i've got uh some more duct tape because you know what can't you do with duct tape <clears throat> i've got some zip ties for general purpose use these are great for uh putting up your shelter and things like that and i've got a spare ridge line this is already to go it's a different type of ridge line than the other one I showed you earlier but it's still effective uh, one thing I hate is 
trying to set up a, a shelter and you, you've got to put everything together. So the, the more steps you do now, the less steps you have to do in the field. Mm -hmm. This is just a carborundum uh, knife sharpening stone. Got to keep your blade sharp, keep your axis scoured. Got some snacks. Got some light sticks. If I make a shelter and it's enclosed enough, you can light up the inside of your shelter without giving off so much light that everybody's going to be looking at you. Tylenol, because Wendell gives me a headache sometimes. <laughs> Just kidding. And a spoon. Never go anywhere without a spoon. Yep. I, I think I've explained that before. Yes. Haven't I? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And it's very important. Yes, because if <laughs> somebody else has some food, there's a good chance that I want some of it too. <laughs> And I don't want to slobber on your spoon, so <laughs> I bring my own. <laughs> and that's just about everything. That's everything in the butt pack? Yeah. Wow. That is a lot of stuff. Yeah, that's, look over here, that's a lot of stuff. Yeah, that's amazing. All right, so we went through your rig. Yes. And one thing that I noticed, and you, you touched on briefly, is that you were carrying just pistol mags on that belt rig. Yes. So if you have to carry a rifle, what is that? <clears throat> what are you going to change, or what are you going to... If I'm carrying a rifle, yeah. I'm also going to be carrying my plate carrier. Okay. And that has <clears throat> uh, space for six mags, mm -hmm. uh, three double stack mags, and I know, you know... You got to keep your front slicks because if you're laying on the ground, you're right. I'm fat, so I'm gonna be <laughs> sticking up in here anyway, so I don't care. Okay, and I've been shot before, it wasn't that bad. Okay, so um, I'll have a, a camel back that's attached to my the back of my plate carrier. Mm -hmm. I've got a spare mag pouch here for a buddy mag. Okay, so like you're out. Okay, grab my buddy mag, you uh -huh. can grab it off my shoulder. Okay. Plus, I have another IFAC uh -huh. on my plate carrier, uh -huh. and I've got a small admin pouch for little EDC stuff, uh -huh. <clears throat> or EMC stuff, every mission carry. Okay. <laughs> I just made that up. <laughs> and, <laughs> um, and a few other little doodads on there. Yeah. And I've got uh, side plates that I found that not only can I fit my side plates in, yeah. but there's just enough room to get an MRE entree into each side. <laughs> I'm not gonna starve to death out in the field. <laughs> it's important. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So we're, <clears throat> body armor, I think we'll hit on maybe another video. Yeah, we should do a video about our, our uh, body armor. Yeah, because body armor. That's a whole big. It yeah, is, <laughs> and I think most people who are getting started in this whole preparedness thing, they always think that they need like the latest and greatest body armor, and they go out yeah. and spend a ton of money, and they really don't have any knowledge behind it. Exactly. And like you and I were discussing off camera, that if you're <clears throat> in the situation where you were talking about where you're scouting, more of a, I don't know, I guess what you call LERP type yeah. Reconnaissance, you know, you're out looking, you're scouting, you may not want to carry body armor. It's too heavy to be carrying out in the field unless you've got some super ultra light Gucci armor and you're in good right. shape. Right. Somebody like me, I'm not going to be super far away. Right. <clears throat> so I can carry that. But right. with, with body armor, you have to remember you're adding a lot of weight mm -hmm. to your torso right. and... If you're trying to move quickly, you're not going to do it with body armor on. Right. Especially if you run like AR-500 plates like I do. Right. <laughs> That's heavy. Right. Okay. All right. That makes sense. All right. So what I want to do is I want to go through some gear that I've been assembling. And I think, like I said this before, it is nowhere near as well thought out as yours at this point. It is still very much in the infancy. I'm still building. I'm adding. I'm figuring out what's necessary, what's not necessary, yeah. but these are items that I've put together uh, really just online through Amazon, through other online sources, stuff mm -hmm. that I've studied off of other people, and is what I would consider real basic, but it's a starting point. 
Yeah. And that's where everybody needs to at least be at. It's like, what's the starting point? What do you, what, what are you going to go with? So we're going to go through that. And then um, what I'm looking for uh, from you is, is you can interject what you see as things that can be added, subtracted, and hopefully that'll help somebody who's building their kit up. Okay. That makes sense? <coughs> yeah, that's great. Okay. So this kit that I've, I'm starting to put together is, um, like I said, it is inexpensive in some areas. This is not super Gucci stuff, um, but it's affordable and it's readily available uh, to the general public and you don't have to spend a ton of money on it. So my thinking is that first I have a very simple, lightweight, chest rig and this is something I've labored over a lot trying to figure out what was going to be um, acceptable for what I think <laughs> I'm going to do. This is based on <clears throat> the Helicon Tech uh, training rig. It is a copy of it um, from another company. I got this on Amazon. Uh, it was not that expensive. It was under, I want to say under 60 bucks. But it's, it's pretty well made. Um, I, I've been impressed with it, at least looking it over as, as far as how it's put together. Now, I will say, before we get into this, the caveat is none of this has been field tested. And that is, I yet. think, yet. And I think that is the most important thing. This needs to be worn out in the field. I need to take this um, to the range. I need to shoot with it. I need to figure out <clears throat> how... I quickly I can access mags, things like that. So all that stuff needs to be figured out. That needs to be done. You just don't build a kit and say you're good to go. You actually have to train oh, with it. Oh, yes. You must train as you work as you train and yep. train as you work. So this rig, <coughs> very simple. We have four rifle mags. These are just 30-round uh, Magpul P mags. Uh, there are two uh, pistol mag pouches here two over there. I've got three pistol mags for my Glock and then on this pouch I've got uh, a tack light in here. Oh I, yeah. Because I think that's important. <coughs> this pouch I haven't done anything with yet but this is really what I would consider an admin pouch and this folds down. It's got some elastic keepers, a mesh, me mesh pouch and a slip pocket back here. Oh yeah this is really good for putting small things like M&Ms. <laughs> exactly. You're always about the snacks, aren't you? Yes. <laughs> snacks are important. Yes, they are. Down here, this pouch actually comes off if you don't want to use it, but this is more going to be set up for um, an IFAC. And this has you Velcro panels in here. There. Yeah, so you can Velcro in some organizers. And oh, yeah. what I'm thinking is tourniquet, compression bandages, quick clot, trauma stuff not boo-boo stuff but more or less trauma stuff blowout kit. yeah blowout yeah. Kit. this is going to be quick quickly accessible <laughs> by me or some, or by somebody who may have to work on me so that is really <clears throat> all there is to this rig there's not much to it there is a pocket in the back the velcro open for a map pouch it's some serious velcro on yeah there, right? i know it's a little too much oh but, i see how it works yeah so you could put stuff inside yeah. here be a good place for a map but this rig what i like about it is it's set up in an h configuration which is more yeah. comfortable this can be worn over a plate carrier yeah. so now i don't have to have a lot of separate gear this can be my lightweight rig i can still maneuver in this and i can wear it under a plate carrier if i need to okay the, but this is also going to work in conjunction with a belt rig, which has a Kydex holster uh, for my Glock. Uh, this belt in particular is a Condor. I like that belt. <clears throat> and this has the, the uh, what I think they call this like the Alpine style buckle. Mm -hmm. um, these are super nice because they're very easy to get in and out of, but they're also very secure. And for guys who are getting into this and saying, well, I've heard Condor sucks, it's not that good. I would hmm. say maybe 10, 15 years ago, Condor was not that great. 
Yes. <clears throat> But they, Especially in the last ten years, they've they've upped their game. Their yeah, they quality have. control is a lot better. Yeah, it is. It's it's incredible. This this is actually one of the better belts that I found that was very affordable. Is that padded? That is padded. It's padded. It has a grippy rubber material on it, so it's gonna it's gonna hug. Yeah. And then the it has an inner belt and an outer belt, so you can you can slip on a holster. Nice. And then these mag pouches, <clears throat> these are based off of. I think G-Code came up with this, this design. This is just kind of a knockoff of G-Code, but these, these go into the Molly and they actually retain the mags pretty well. Um, and I've got it set up for... And they've got little <laughs> lips on them to, to replace that mag right. easier. Exactly. So this will hold a pistol mag. Yeah, that that's is, in there pretty good. That's not going to come out. And you can adjust adjust the tension with cord locks and bungee. So I've got two pistol mags, and I've got a spare rifle mag here. This is probably the most high-end piece of gear I got. This is actually a Mystery Ranch water bottle pouch, but it was one of the most low-profile ones that I could find that goes on a belt rig that's not going to take up a lot of room. So I can slip in a water bottle. It's going to fit a, a full-size 32-ounce Nalgene. It'll fit a, a normal, you know, just a plain old water bottle you get at the gas station. So I can put in different types of water bottles, and I'm ready to go. Um, the back right now is slick, and I'm debating on what to do with that because <clears throat> I want to be able to operate out of a vehicle, and keeping it slick in the back would be beneficial to that. But yes, it, would. it may also be nice to have maybe... Uh, a tourniquet um, or a multi-tool, a couple of things towards the back, but maybe not directly on the back. So there are things I'm thinking about adding to it. I would put your multi-tool like right here. Towards the front? Yeah, just in front of your pistol. Right, and I could, probably, holster, right? I could probably even run one, uh, get a pouch that runs that way mm -hmm. instead of up and down so it's <clears throat> not hanging out as much. <clears throat> And then also I'm thinking possibly uh, some type of knife adding it to this to this rig, either for self-defense or for field use, right? Yeah. So <clears throat> very simple. I've seen a lot of battle belts that get really crazy with the amount of gear they carry. Um, this one I've worn comfortably when it's all loaded up and it, it stays on my hips. I don't need suspenders with it, <clears throat> which is good. So that's... I think that's... Must be nice. <laughs> right. So, very simple, lightweight setup. Now... I, I did not come equipped with a buttocks, so <laughs> any kind of belt pulls my pants down. Right. So then, in conjunction with that, and we're not going to get into this too deep, but <clears throat> with Z's gear, he was showing his field support gear, like his food, his stove, shelter, all that stuff I'm carrying in a smaller day pack um i've got my i got a metal canteen i've got a basha tarp in here um, i've got food stove uh saw just different types of field equipment <clears throat> that's going to sustain me and a first aid kit so this can be easily worn with the chest rig um, and they all work together so it's a very simple lightweight uh, setup. <clears throat> this pack is the USMC ILBE Assault Pack. These are getting harder to find, um, but I've had these in the past and I love them. They're great packs. They're very well designed and they're very suited for this type of lightweight mission that we're talking about. So, so you we were you were just saying I was off camera a minute, but you were saying get another one of these canteen pouches. Yeah, have one on each side. That put, distributes the weight better, not towards the back. Yeah, because if you look at it this way, you've got a lot of weight right out this out here. Mm -hmm. And I found in my experience that you can carry more weight closer to you, mm -hmm. and it doesn't feel as heavy. Okay, that and, makes sense. And you've got twice the water. Right, exactly. And this uh, this pack is hydration compatible, so that's always a possibility. I could throw in um, a source bladder or a Camelback um, if I want to extend my water. Mm -hmm. um, of course, they do have means of uh, water treatment in here as well, so that's helpful. But 
So overall, just, I mean, looking at what little I've assembled here, and this is, uh, this is such in the beginnings of what I'm doing, what, what kind of things? I think you've got a great start. A couple of minor things I would change. Sure. Other than the, the canteen, put two of them on there. Because in combat, you get thirsty bad and sure. quick. Okay. <laughs> and you might want to put your attack light that's somewhere else and put another mag in there. Okay. Um, just because I like to have lots of mags. But right. you do have three mags plus one in your pistol which is really that's enough yeah um yeah. I, I, and i've got two on the belts actually already yeah. so i could <clears throat> i'm thinking possibly using maybe these pouches for other things i might be able to get a tourniquet in here or a multi-tool like a leatherman yeah put my leatherman on, on the on the chest rig yeah so there's some there's some different options i'm not really i'm not sold on pistol mags necessarily on a chest rig because <clears throat> if you think about it if you have to go to your pistol that, that means your guns either dry or malfunctioning right and then you go to your pistol as a secondary weapon right that that's not a primary combat yeah. weapon yeah so. and reloading off out of a chest rig i think is going to be difficult yeah um it's much easier coming out of this belt scenario yeah take one of those uh Take this one off, put it on your belt, yep. leave this one on with a, a multi-tool and your tack light, yeah. and you'll be more comfortable. It, it's easier to, you, you're right-handed, yeah. correct? Yep. So it's going to be easier to reach your mags from here. From the left, okay. Yeah, yeah that makes sense. That makes sense. See, and those are the things that um, I think some people don't consider. Yeah, it's all the little things that add up right. and make big things. Right, and and, and that's and that goes back to the whole training thing. If you're yeah. not training with this stuff, how do you know it's going to work? Yeah, right. and then if you're not training, you forget. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah, you want <laughs> muscle stuff. memory. Muscle yes. memory is important. All right, well, that was good information. Um, I can't think of anything to cover right else with this video. I mean, this is really just kind of... A starter for people was this an expensive pack well so <clears throat> it's an interesting story that this pack is particularly hard to find right now yeah I know the, they're, they're drying up <laughs> in the supply system there's not very many of them out there the ones you do find are crappy they've been run run through the ringer yeah they've been beat up a little bit yeah if you find a good one it's gonna cost you some money it's gonna cost you a lot but I was really fortunate enough to have a gentleman send me one for free because I was looking for one. Wow. Now the, the graciousness of his heart, this was his pack that he used when he was in the Corps. Wow. And he didn't use it anymore. He says, I, I know you'll use it here. I'll send this to you for free. Thank you. And it's like, yeah, that's awesome. Get it from a friend that's got a little bit of sentimental value. Yeah, so even. I was really fortunate to get it. I've had one of these in the past. I got rid of it and I really regretted it. Yeah, you should have given it to me. Yeah, because it is a phenomenal <laughs> pack. But there are other ones on the market that are very similar. Um, you don't need a huge pack for this type of thing That's that we're what doing. I was thinking of earlier. What? <laughs> I was going to mention that. What's that? You wouldn't want a pack much bigger than this. Okay. Because then you're going to want to put stuff in it because it'll fit. <laughs> yes. Right. And then you're carrying too much. Right. You're carrying stuff you don't really need. Right. And you're carrying too much weight. Yeah. So. Yeah. That's and you can I always carry. have a bigger pack in a vehicle yeah. back at a, like a, a command a, yeah a more secure home. point but if you're out scouting um from a more secure area you're going to want something that's lightweight yep. right that's my thinking plus and you know we have a nuclear apocalypse or something and you're out scouting and you find a couple of cans of beans you need the room for that <laughs> <laughs> absolutely Back to the food again. <laughs> yes. And I did eat before this video. <laughs> well, they do say the Army travels on their stomach, right? Yes, they do. That's true. Okay. Well that supplied. It's very good. <laughs> All right. So I think we've covered enough for tonight. I just wanted to go through my stuff and let Z go through his. And hopefully that gives you guys some ideas on how to set stuff up. You don't have to spend a ton of money. But you do need to set it up and you need to get out and train with it. And that's what it's all about. So 
being a prepared citizen is more than just having the gear, but it's also being prepared um, with your training and uh, networking with people that you know and trust and getting their, their knowledge and downloading that knowledge. And then hopefully this video helps some people who are just starting. Yeah. We're not all tactical hard chargers with, with an MOS. I, <clears throat> I didn't serve in the military. Um, so I don't have that knowledge base, but he did, so he can help me and hopefully help you guys, right? Yeah. Yeah. Cool. You've done good in the Army because you'll eat anything. Yeah. I've, <laughs> I've seen him eat some weird things. Yeah, that's very true. <laughs> that's All right, man. Video. Thanks a lot. Take care. I Thanks appreciate. for having me over. Yeah. <laughs> do I look like a moose? <laughs> well, when you do that, yeah, you kind of do.